Hey there, comic book fans. I'm back from the comic shop again this week. And we're going to get seven new comics. I got uh, four off the pull list. Well, three with the pull list because uh, they're true uh, more True Believers comics. But we'll start you off with uh, Comic Shop News Winter Preview. I have like a holiday preview, a winter preview, uh, all sorts of previews. Once again, this uh, gives you stuff that's coming out. Man, I was really not seeing things last week. This just reminded me that um, when I looked at Comic Shop Preview last week and said there were no Spider-Man strips, I looked later on and there were Spider-Man strips in it. I was like, well, how come I didn't see these when I was showing it off on the video? So, none in this one, I guess, because it's not the weekly one. And there was also, the other thing I didn't see, oddly enough, True Believers, let's give you... This is the first of the True Believers. When I was looking at these last week, I was looking for what issue they came from, and I couldn't find it in the Indicia, and said, oh, it doesn't come from that. They don't print it anymore, but uh, Sarge TD was doing a... I still watched his video today, and he was like, yeah, they're, they're in here. See, this is right there. Uh, originally published in Fantastic Four number 18. I don't know how I looked at the Indicias last week and didn't see the original number because i matter of fact i made a big thing about them not having the original number in so i i don't know what i was looking at because i went back and looked at them after looking at sarge td's video and was like they're there originally presented in fantastic four number 18 that's the super scroll one by the way i had a I, i'm having a lot of fun with these i really enjoyed the three i got last week true believers fantastic four dragon man this is Fantastic 435. Look at that. I look right in the Indicia and there's the number. I don't know why I couldn't... I don't know why I looked in the Indicia last week and saw nothing, but... I'm having fun reading these old comics as comics. I mean, they're... I like collected editions well enough, but it's just something fun about having the actual comic. And this is kind of... And if I had... If I actually had Fantastic Four number 35... It'd be a little more precious than this. It'd be like, ooh, I don't want to mess it up. But this is not that I'm going to mess it up. But it's just fun to have a casual... This is how these were meant to be read. Sort of casual, uh, un, not very precious comics. Of course, we all love our comics and want to keep them, so they're precious to us. But it's not going to be worth $700 someday. So we can just read it and enjoy it. Fantastic Four number 20. This is the Molecule Man. And I, I don't even think I've read all of, let's say, the first hundred Fantastic Four. Uh, I probably read half of maybe the first, just because Fantastic Four was never my favorite book. And I just never tracked them all down when I was buying it and, and read them, even in reprints or anything. So it's fun to read these. Like I said, and even if I did read any of these, it was so long ago, who remembers them? But I'm digging these True Believers editions. I, had, I just pre-ordered... Uh, bunch of Conan ones are thinking I think are coming out in February or uh, January after whatever after the Fantastic Four comes the uh, Conan the, the uh, my um, uh, com my LCS owner said that uh, they're doing them with themes now so this is Fantastic Four month for the true believers so I'm glad to have gotten a bunch of Fantastic Fours and here is my shorted from last week snot girl I like that cover it's funny, I said last week I didn't even miss Snot Girl. I wasn't excited about it. I like that cover, even though she's looking all snotty on it. So now I'm excited to read Snot Girl again. I guess when I actually look can look at it, it gets more gets me more interested in it. And imagine that, actually having the comic makes me more interested in the comic. Wow, how, how shocking is that? Um, number 12, this is of Snot Girl. I've enjoyed this series. I've always called this the... The, the series I'm surprised I like, but I enjoy. I've, I've never even read uh, who's this by uh, the Scott Pilgrim guy, Brian Lee O'Malley writes it and Leslie Hung draws it. I've never even read Scott Pilgrim, so I was unfamiliar with his work at all. But got the latest Snot Girl, and then new this week Mage number fourteen. Oh, there's only one issue left of Mage. We're coming to the climax. Uh, <laughs> you pricks don't stand a chance. Um, he's facing off against the big bad guys in some realm who've kidnapped his wife and son. Uh, 
Don't want to give away too much. Let's, there's some of the bad guy henchmen right there who uh, are after his wife. I think his, his wife is in the building with the bad guy henchmen. Meanwhile, he's assaulting this magical castle, which I think that, uh, there's the magic world and there's the real world, we learned last uh, issue. And you, they exist side by side, blah, 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 blah. Well, that's, that's who he's facing, I think. A lot of these, actually, that's his wife, isn't it? She's facing this giant troll thing. But he I think he's kind of in that realm, too. But Mage has been excellent. Um, Mage, the hero discovered, was the 80s series. Mage, the hero, was the hero reborn, the hero discovered, and the hero denied? Maybe that was it. I don't remember. But there's, there's three Mage... There's three Mage series, original from the 80s, the one from the ni late 90s, and this one from the late 2000 teens. So uh, check them all out. They're all collected from uh, Image These Days. Well, except this one because it's not done yet, but it will be. But good stuff, Matt Wagner and Mage. What else do we have here? The Magic Order, number five. I think this is only going six. I think there's one more issue to this. Let me just quickly glance at it. Uh, yes, uh, I saw To Be Continued. That's all. So there's six issues of this. I mean, once again, this is a series. Um, Mark Miller and Olivia Quapel, and I'm really digging this one. I like the art. Like I'm, I'm hit or miss on Mark Miller's Netflix series these days. Matter of fact, I didn't like Prodigy that much. Prodigy was the one I got last week, a first issue. Um, Mark Miller and who was it Albert Raphael? Hold on, I'm sitting right over here. Wait, wait one sec. There we go. This was uh, Mark Millen, Raphael Albuquerque. I wasn't too fond of this one. I'm not going to get the rest of the series. It wasn't terrible or anything, but the um, the artwork was just a little off for me, and the writing was a little off. Uh, the, it's basically every smart guy in comic in comics you've ever seen is the lead. He's you know any uh, my. I saw one review on uh, YouTube that called him Buckaroo Banzai. My friend Rob called him Encyclopedia Brown. But he's any smart guy in comics ever. That's what this is written like. So it was kind of, eh, let me down a little bit. It wasn't terrible, but uh, I, I can leave that one behind. The Magic Order has been good. Once again, I call Mark Miller the master of the expected. He doesn't really do anything groundbreaking, new. He just... Um, does it well, and this is this is turning out exactly how I expected it to turn out. All the big bads took out the parents of the Magic Order. Now the one kid who quit the Magic Order, even though he was the most powerful wizard potentially, is now back and kicking the bad guys' asses. So uh, I fully expect him to to keep on kicking the bad guys' asses until they win next issue. So but I think that's him right there. I think that's the. The the the, uh, the guy who quit the magic order. Oh, I don't want. I'm a reluctant hero. I don't want to be a hero. I've had it with you and your magic. You know, it's nothing you haven't read it before, and that's kind of my definition of Mark Miller. It's nothing you haven't ever read before, but when he pulls it off well, he pulls it off well. So this one is going in the pulls it off well category. Not so much pulls it off well. well let's see what else did I get this week? Was that it? Was that it? Hey, that was the last of them. What? No, one more thing. I forgot it. I'm like shuffling my comics down here, so I can't remember. <laughs> I have to go through them all. Usually, usually I go in order. Birthright issue number thirty-four. This one's been good. The little brother versus the big. The little brother magic user versus the big brother barbarian. So it's like uh, Conan versus if Conan had a brother who was a wizard. That's what's happening in this issue. So it should be cool. The artwork's always... Once again, another... I don't... This artist just doesn't do great colors. Luke Brisson, is that his name? Uh, Andre Brisson. Like, Luke Brisson is a director, isn't he? Andre Brisson, creator, artist. I love his interiors, the, but his covers just always seem a little lackluster. But anyway, Birthright is a really good read. Um, oh, there's one other thing I wanted to... Where is my... Uh, paper i was at um uh where was i at this i was at ac moore and i bought some more of the uh graphite paper i don't know if uh, a few weeks ago 
I want, once again, hold on one second. I'm going to go grab it. There we go. It was right behind me. This stuff right here, I've showed you before. Uh, I have a video that, sh that a how to video on how to transfer a smaller drawing and make it into a bigger drawing. And this is the paper I use. It's a, uh, uh, it's just in a roll now, but it, it, on one one side it's just regular paper, and the other side is graphite, um, and you you know you use it to transfer drawings. But I haven't bought any of this in a long, long time because there's 12 sheets in here that are each about half the size of this, and you can reuse them over because you don't use up all the graphite when you trans. It's only one little line you use, so this stuff lasts a while. You know, 12 sheets lasting 10 years I think and I don't use it all the time I've been using it a lot lately because of these drawings but uh, I only use it for big stuff like this and I went to AC a. Moore jacks the prices up on stuff and then gives you coupons so it's like every time I go to AC Moore I bring I had a 55% off coupon and like I said I haven't bought this and I expected it to be 10 15 dollars and I got there, and this thing right here was $33. And I was like, oh. But luckily, I had a 15%, a 55% off coupon, which brought it down to, brought it down to a, bring it? What is it? Did I just say bring it? Brought it down <laughs> to about $15, $16, which was a much better. I remember, I, as soon as I got home, I went to dickblick.com just to see how much they had this for. Because I, you know, I usually order things from there, but stuff I need right away. Like I, 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 unex I went to use a sheet of this and it just didn't transfer anything over. I'm like, Ooh, I'm out of think. And I had no other new ones. Like all my, all my sheets of it are well used because I used them over and over and over. So I'm like, I need some of this right now. Um, but on Dick Blick, they had this, the list price at about $22 and we're selling it for 17 or 18. So I was like, ah, $33 really was an absurd price for this. So if you're over going to AC Moore, go to acmore.com and you can, you can download the coupon right to your phone or else I print it out because um, I don't know. I, I don't have a phone that I uh, download stuff to, but that's a whole other story. But uh, always, always bring a coupon to AC Moore and Michael's. If you're ever going to Michael's, uh, bring a coupon to there too so that you, you, always, you not, don't end up paying $33 for a $20 item. But anyway, we'll sell you, show you a little art. We'll show you this, what I was just showing you before. This is the, the latest giant ink drawing I did. And this one took a long time. It's one of the more complicated ones. Uh, as you can see here, we got monsters and faces and monsters and bodies. And I kind of broke it up into panels that all whoops, relate to each, like her, that's kind of her body in the middle. And then it goes into that head, which is still kind of her body. And this guy over there is scary, just uh, on the edges of her. And then we get these weird fellas up top. But uh, this one, I want to I do a big head next. So this one was so complicated. It took me in, uh, an extra third, it took me a third longer, I'd say. I worked on it for three days rather than two days the, over the weekend um, to get this done. So I want a simpler one that takes me only two days now, but uh, I, I like the way it came out. I think, I like I like the complexity of it. I uh, Sometimes I like simplicity, sometimes I like complexity. Well, mostly I like simplicity, but, I, but, but to me, I always said, uh, Complexity is just simplicity multiplied, and that's what this one is. This is simplicity multiplied, because uh, every single little shape and form is simple, but add them up and add them up and keep putting more on more, and it gets complex. So uh, yeah, that's that. That's the that's the little uh, speech I have about this one this week, and and the, and the little sayings. Complexity is simplicity multiplied. Okay, so you guys all have a good week out there. <laughs>